I'm, I'm thinking how much my life changed uh, since we've been closed in our homes and how much should I transport it into, into online lessons and to, uh, what, what, which fragments of my offline lessons should be um, exported to my online life. And this was, I think, my, my biggest uh, problem at the beginning. Because, of course, the first thing that comes to my mind is to do, it, do, the, do the same. I mean, that was my, my, my first idea. But then I thought, just stop. It's impossible to do it. Uh, first of all, a normal 45 minutes lesson is not the same thing in the homes. Because normally we have to talk in the beginning, do some formal things like checking the register. So I thought that I should cut everything. My demand should be cut in half. This was my first thing. And then I thought that not everything is, uh, can be changed in, uh, into online things. So I started to dig into my tools, into my resources, and I decided to, um, uh, to focus mainly on working with sources and maybe to give my students one or two tasks, but everything should be accompanied with sort of my comment because I don't want to lose them the context. And I always like to give them the context during my lessons. So yeah, that this, this is the first thing that, that came to my mind when I was closed in my home. What about you, Richard? Very, very similar. So basically I completely agree with you that we can't do everything that we were doing in the class online. And if you try and do everything, I think we're setting ourselves up for a fall because I think it's too difficult for the children at home to do all that without a teacher in the room. And in the same way that you've decided to distill what you were doing and do less, and you're just focusing on source work, I've just decided to focus on knowledge because I don't have many classes because I'm a senior leader. So I, I, I help run the school. So I only actually teach two or three classes and all my classes are an examination class. And so as a result, I've just decided I'm going to focus on knowledge and nothing else, because if as long as they've picked up the pieces of the story, when I come back into lessons, whenever that's going to be, um, and no one knows, at the moment, no, no. which is very odd, but when we go back into class, if they've at least got the basics, I've got something there I can then work with. And I agree with you as well. I have hour long lessons in class. So I've really been aiming for 30 minutes worth of work mm -hmm. because I'm finding it difficult to cope at the moment. And yeah. I like to think I'm a mostly sane adult grown up person. <laughs> if I was a teenager, I don't know how the hell I'd, what I'd be thinking at the moment. I mean, yeah. I'm struggling to sleep at the moment. I'd imagine kids are the same. And the other thing that I'm doing that I know is similar to you, Yatsek, is about when this started about two weeks ago in the UK, and that feels a very long time ago now, uh, initially I thought I'd live stream lessons and I would just carry on with my timetable and I'd live stream lessons. And the more I sat, and thought about it, the more stupid I realised that was because lots of the children that I teach, I don't know about how much IT they've got at home. I, I mean, in our household, we've got two computers and there's only two of us, which is quite a privilege. I'd imagine for some of the kids in, at home, they've got one computer with numerous kids and their mum and dad are trying to work at the same time. So live streaming just doesn't work. Yeah. And I think trying to expect kids to be doing lessons from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. in the afternoon is crazy. <laughs> and so, they can be concentrated all the time at the same time with the same amount of, of, of focus on you. It's, it's, it's absolutely impossible. So, uh, but what I have added to my uh, teaching is to have those one hour live slots when I'm waiting for them if they have any questions or any comments uh, when they are doing the, the, my tasks. So uh, when we found out that it's not going to be just two weeks 
and when I found out that we, we, we don't know when it's going to end, uh, we decided in my school just to give them one hour a day with, um, with the teacher they choose to just to connect to and to ask some questions to be sure that everything is okay. Because you focused on, 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 on sources, I, uh, on knowledge, sorry, I'm, I'm trying anyway to, to combine both knowledge and sources because... I thought you would be. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm trying, but it's not that uh, simple because during the, the the class you can you can you can see how it works if they are okay with the source or if they're completely lost. Here I cannot see it, so I'm just trying to use the simpler version of my tasks and simpler sources to to be with. But I'm not going to give up with them because well, this is what we should do. And when I found out it's, that it's not going to be two weeks. I include. I, I, I went back to my sources again because I think that 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 is important. And the thing that's really surprised, not surprised me, that shocked me in the last couple of weeks is how much in the classroom you can pick up on student misconceptions and misunderstanding, and how online I have no control over yeah. that. So I have no clue if it's if it's if it's. If it's going to take them one hour, twenty minutes, fifty yeah. minutes, sometimes I, I can see that it, the 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 tasks are coming back after fifteen minutes, and I thought that this task would be much longer to do. And yeah, that's that's very difficult for and, me and, to. Yeah, and clearly little bits in the classroom. So, for example, my class have just done; they've just learned about. Um, the movement from democracy to dictatorship in Germany from 33 to 34, mm -hmm. right? So the, the classic story, Hitler moving from chancellor to Führer. And they all got confused about the SA and the SS, all of them. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought I was really clear. And I thought the textbook was really clear. And it's clearly in class, I just give a lot of clues and I do a lot of teacher explanation to help the kids out with that. And that's something that I've really missed. So I've done a lot of video work to really help my kids out. Um, and I think that suddenly, actually, it's starting to get better in this second week because I've realized that short, sharp videos where I explain an issue for, and I'm trying to keep the videos under 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I think that basically that, to me, is the alternative of me stood at the front of the class explaining at the start of the so lesson you're making you those videos explanation yeah videos? okay yeah so basically i've taken my lesson powerpoints and i've stripped out anything where there's a task and i've just focused on the story and explaining the story in much simpler ways and i've put those up online on a youtube channel because i also think that it's going to help me next year because if those resources are there, I can set them for revision next year. So actually, I'm kind of doing two things at the same time, which is good for me, because what I didn't want to do is spend hours and hours and hours on online lessons now that in three months would be a complete waste of time. Yeah. So I'd rather produce resources now that I can definitely go back to next year. So that I think, and actually, some of my students have said they really enjoy it because they're still getting that interaction ish with me because they're still having me giving them input and it's actually quite easy because in powerpoint you can just you can add narration you could literally powerpoint you can click start record and you mm -hmm. i've got a little headset mic and unlike your big flashy mic and i've just i can just i just add my voice onto powerpoints and then upload them and it's really easy for me so it takes it probably takes me about 15 20 minutes to do one properly Mm -hmm. But then I think it's good for the kids. But what about your feedback to them? Are you just giving the points? Because I know that you're using quizzes, which are we going to talk about later, but uh, do you give them any feedback on, on their work or just points that they get after the quiz? Yeah, briefer. Um, I've, I've done less than you have. I, I really like the idea that you've said about having a live hour where you're available for questions. But I've realized that lots of the kids that I'm teaching online, they're all doing it at different times of the day because yeah. of when they have access to a computer. So I'm 
I've told most of them they, they should email me at the end of the lesson just with an, with, and with literally with a photo of their work because I'm trying to keep it as simple as I can for them. And I've been feeding back where appropriate. So, but I've really, my feedback's completely changed as well though because normally in class I'd be doing feedback about how to get better as a writer. Yeah. And I've ditched that because that's not what they're struggling with. What they're struggling with is misunderstanding and misconceptions. So all my feedback is basically is completely about the history. And it's like, that bit's really good, but here you've mixed up Ernst Rom and Heinrich Himmler. <laughs> Swap those round instead. So my feedback's had to change as well, because I think that all those misconceptions that I would normally have dealt with in class, I can't deal with them in class. I have to do it online. Right. So, so I agree with you. I think that the last two, three weeks, I've completely changed my practice because I've had to get simpler, much quicker, and still have input with the kids. Yeah, that, that, that's what I was thinking about, that we also have to be, uh, that, that we should think also about us teachers, that we would have a lot of work right now, and I'm really tired after one day, and after five days, I'm completely dead. And uh, all I can do is to lay down and sleep. So uh, I, I didn't expect that. I thought it would be nice time just to hang out and do nothing and from time to time to send some materials and give feedback. But it's not the case. It's completely different. It's not what I was expecting. But in a way, I kind of like it. If it wasn't for this bloody virus, I would say this is a kind of interesting experience for me because i learned a lot and i know this is the completely the same thing as you i would have a lot of new materials just to use in one year let's hope that in one year we always will be forgetting about the virus but anyway it will be yeah it will be it will be good thing to reuse i hope and i i agree with you i thought this would be so much easier yeah and and, and i'll be honest i i even when I could, you could in the UK, you could see that this was going to happen. So I very, very quickly put an order in with an online bookshop and got loads of books because I thought I'm gonna have loads of time. I'll be reading. It'll be brilliant. I'm gonna have coffee and read. And it, yeah, that's not happening. No, no. And the the first week was was horrible, and it just felt like I was constantly like kids and teachers and parents and I've never had more emails in my life this week's been better because I feel I've got into the flow and I've also I've, I've now stuck to the, a very very rigid format for what we're doing um, yeah. and actually that format I'm really happy with and I'm just going to do that every lesson now what about other teachers when in your school are you kind of uh, sharing the experience or do you have the same format to, to with, with other subject or it, everybody just came up with their own with their own so in the first well, week in the first week because we and i'm assuming this is similar to you we had hardly any notice of, from the government about yeah. that this was going to happen in that first week everybody just did their own thing going into the second week we've all started collaborating a lot more and sharing and everybody is moving towards a very similar model and we're pretty much sharing it out year by year so i'm focusing on um, year 10 which is kind of kids who are 15 in the UK mm. and one of my colleagues is doing year 9 so kids that are 14 another colleague is doing year 8 which is kids that are 13 and I think that that's better because it, you have to share because it's hard and if you want to do it properly it takes time and effort and also it's easy for me because I don't have any kids and the idea of doing this and having kids running around who yeah. I'm also trying to teach at home, which a lot of my colleagues have got. So uh, again, I'm, I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for my colleagues who've got kids because they're, they're going through a nightmare at the moment. I'm lucky enough to have older kids, so they don't- I thought you did. Don't, yeah, they, they, they sit on my head, but really sometimes I see my colleagues just teaching and, and talking to my students and having their kids on the, on the lab. So it's just it's complete. I cannot imagine that. It's, it's crazy. I, I agree. And that's why I think that everybody has got to make this a lot more simple than they are doing, because the idea of trying to do that with a toddler on your lap and another one running around behind you is hellish. I mean, it's pretty much, it's bad enough that my two cats run around my house screaming 
and interrupting <laughs> my calls. But it, the idea of doing that with toddlers is horrible. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to show? Do you want me to show you what I've been doing, or do you yeah, want to show yeah. what you've been doing? Yes. Let's 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 start from you. Just show okay. Me. So let me share my screen. Look, I know what I'm doing now. So this is a this is an example of something I set today mm -hmm. for my year tens, and this is as easy as I'm trying to make it. So I've really tried to make it literally task one, two, three, and four. So I'm going to attempt okay. to start every single lesson now with a quiz on the last lesson. So I'm doing that quiz um, with with Google Quiz. So in Google Forms, if you click on this um, settings button at the top, you can turn it into a quiz. And mm -hmm. it's really, it's this easy. So it's just, I'm doing really basic misconception. Have you understood what's what? So what was the SD? Um, and then you'd click secret service and it gives you a point. So yeah, but that, this that's, is self that's the funny thing that normally when we met in the real life and we and we talked about what the history teaching is all about, it would be the last thing to show to ourselves because but in this environment we are we have to go back to the basics and ask this kind of questions and I totally uh, okay with it because yeah, this is what we can do right now. I, I agree. And, and, and this is the sort of thing that normally I'd skip over quite quickly because I could confidently teach it in class and I'd move on and it'd be fine. But these kind of quite, I mean, they're quite basic questions, but these are the sort of things that I think my kids need. So the first thing they do is there's 10 of 10 questions. It self marks it. I do nothing. It's really easy. And it collects all the names and the responses in the response tab here. Yeah. So you can see, this is the one I set today, and out of 20 kids, 12 kids did it. So, so what about the, 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 rest, the rest? Are you going to, to, to talk to them? Are you going to hurry them up, or just they just I, chose not to do it? I, I sent, and again, there's been, there's been quite a lot of outcry in the UK about how teachers are chasing up kids or not. And some teachers have sent really horrible emails to parents saying, how dare they not do their work? And to me, as I said, again, this is a horrible time. So I sent at the end of the week, if they've not done any, I've not had any kind of sign that they've not done anything. I sent a very, very pleasant email on a Monday morning this week saying, I saw you didn't do any work. Can I help you at all? Is there a reason? Please feel free to email me. I'm here if you need me. And I kept it quite friendly. I don't think I can do more than that, really. I can't expect parents to detain kids or give punishments. It's not fair. So task one, I'm going to decide from now on, is always going to be this quiz on the last lesson. So basically, here's 10 questions on what you did last lesson. Easy. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really easy. Task two, if I was in class, would be me doing the talking. But as I can't do the talking, I've made little PowerPoint videos. So this is one. Um, I won't bore you with it, but it, I mean, look, I've kept it exactly how I do this in class. So with really, really simple diagrams that and talk through. And you make through. the voiceover to it, right? And then, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you could hear that, but. Yeah. Okay, good. But does spread the message that it was intended. Wow. You get the idea. It's me talking, which sounds awful. But I've tried to make them quite visual. and But it's quite simple. It's just me talking through what absolute basics, about nine minutes worth. So task one, quiz. Task two, ten minutes on this. If they, want to, I, if they want to, I've put a textbook up. I don't know if everybody's reading it. I'm not hugely bothered because the material in the video is the same as the textbook, really. But I know some students yeah. might want to. And then I've put a really simple task about make some notes. And mm -hmm. I would never, ever in the classroom just set something as boring as make some notes. But I can't do anything more. 
no, normally I do, and, and in this lesson, if I was in the classroom, I'd do something about a hierarchy and thinking about which one was more powerful than the other and reasons why each was more powerful than the other. You can't do that. So mm -hmm. I've kept it as simple as, can you make some notes on these things? That's it. And actually, the kids are accessing it. And as I said, it's just they're getting some knowledge. And if they get something, I'm kind of happy, really. So, yeah. What about you? Let me stop my share. Okay, so now, well, I'm not going to surprise you much because I'm, going, I'm, I'm doing uh, more or less the same thing. But I will start from, my, from Google Classroom as well. I hope that I can do it right now. And by the way, both, we're both using Google Classroom. There are other things you could use. Just yeah. it, I, I've, the only reason I've used Google Classroom is one, it's easy for me, and two, my kids use it anyway. So it was kind of like, oh, well, just might as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, unfortunately, mine is in Polish, but uh, you can just know what, what, what's happening here. My Polish but, is amazing, so it's uh, fine. <laughs> This is this is my classroom. This is also uh, for fifteen or fifteen year olds. It was about Korea and Vietnam. I just uh, wanted to to them to compare those two wars, and I'm I'm think a bit. I don't want uh, to say I'm a bit. Um, I'm going a bit fur further uh with 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 knowledge and about with, uh, with tasks also so what i'm going to you I'm, I'm using and it was after two weeks i started to use also google sites just to um show them in what in which order they 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 should work so first of all i'm i'm recording myself just to give them a bit of context so i'm explaining them why are we why we are doing this and you do that with a phone yeah, it's it's in my phone. I'm just ad uploading it to YouTube and then I'm just uh, 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 putting it here, and it's very easy and very very convenient. Then this is the the PDF of the of one of my textbooks that I have and I was using uh, several years ago, but I found it very good for here because it it's in very simple language. Maybe not for you, but for me and yeah. for my students. In interestingly, the textbook. You, I've also gone for the absolute simplest textbook I possibly could use, and it's not the textbook I normally use in class. No. But I've realised that they can't access the textbook I use in class, yeah. so I've had to give them the, the the like much much simpler, easier one. So yeah, so this is this is the thing that they am good that they are going to read. It's it's very easy to implement it into the Google sites. It's just um, it's just um, a PDF file, and then uh well what i what i call uh jump to classroom and when we um when we click we find ourselves in a classroom environment again but uh they are doing the exercise the task and it's about and i'm and i'm using google docs so and again i would never do it in my classroom like what were the years of Korea War and Vietnam War? Who was supporting, who was supported by USA and USSR and things like that? But I'm doing it right now just to find out if they understood the story. Yeah. And then, then some easy uh, source. They, oh, this is in English. They they want to. They have to read it and to find out who made it, why, it, and well, that that's easy one. So. Uh, I'm going back to the website and then maybe some photos from uh, from YouTube like the writers on the storm and, and the doors just to show them that Vietnam War and Korea War is very much in pop culture and my and my feedback at the end um, sometimes so yeah this is it this is how I do it and I and as you can see it's it's very simple as well so you but, do feedback via video well, it's not maybe a feedback, but it's it's like a um, final word from a teacher. Why, w what we have done? I'm I'm doing feedback uh, with um, Google uh, with Google Classroom. So when when my students, I'm just don't want to show the work, but they, uh, maybe then we could erase the names and. Uh, uh, yeah, this is this is my talk with with the student, and this is what we what he wrote, and yeah, what what I wrote to him, and because I 
Yeah, they, they are trying to do this. My luck was that we were using Google Classrooms also when it was good old times without coronavirus. So <laughs> I was using it beforehand in the environment of the classroom. So sometimes I just wanted them to put their laptops on the desks and we were doing it online and offline at the same time. So they are not quite surprised uh, by my tasks and by the way I'm asking the questions but either way they are much 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 simpler and much less time consuming than I would do it in the classroom yeah and, and I think that if we're thinking about kind of key principles then that me and you have been talking about I think that really we're and by the way Euroclio watches. We hadn't planned this. It's just no. <laughs> coincidentally that we've done very similar things. <laughs> I think that if we're talking about key principles, it to me it's you've got to keep it as simple as you physically can. It it you've got to you can't do what you do in the classroom Absolutely at all. Not. Yeah. So you have to decide how you want to change it and what you want to do less of. And I think that to me. I like the idea of doing some sort of input from the teacher. Now, I think that you could do it by, I don't think everybody should have to use video, but I think that you could do it via text if you wanted to. But I think some sort of explanation is key. But that explanation could be via text, because if you've got kids, there's no way in hell that you can have time to do a million videos like me and you have done. Oh, yeah. Unless you have a dog like I have. And when, I was, when I'm walking the dog, I'm just recording my, uh, my comments to students. And it's funny because sometimes dog barks and I have to fight with the dog, fight with, with my video and, and fight with neighbors because I cannot approach them too, uh, too much. So, yeah, that, that's funny. But I'm, I, I really think that students should get from us something like, that we are human beings that so they should sometimes get some text or our face or our voice something because i really don't want my student to get just you know the numbers of pages that they want do they have to uh, uh, read and and the names of and and the tasks i just want them to see a little bit of me because in these difficult times they have to see that we all struggle in this time so sometimes i just write them or tell them about my life like my dog yesterday did that and some because well that that's life and and they 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 have really really much bigger problems than my history lessons so as you said if they don't do it that's fine i'm just asking them to to maybe to, to remember about me, to remember about my task, but not, this is not obligatory this time. It's, it's, it's not that important. I, I think we have to accept the fact, and as much as I hate it as a teacher, but it, it can't, we can't force kids to do it, and it isn't obligatory. And as much as it does sadden me, because history should be my, the number one priority of every single person ever. When it it's finishes, not, it will be again. Yes. It will be again, exactly. But at the moment, it's not. And I get that. And it can't be. So as a result, I think we all, all of us, have to kind of cut ourselves some slack. And both teachers and students, and just take it a lot easier. Yeah. And I agree with you about the point about showing some humanity at the moment, which is why I wanted to spend some time recording those videos with my voice. Because, one, I think it shows... In the UK, and I'm assuming this is the same in Poland, we're not really allowed to leave our house at the moment. No, so no. the idea that you only speak to your family members is quite isolating for me. And if I was a kid, I think that's really hard. So I like the idea of them hearing a different voice because I think it's important for them to show some humanity. And I, just like you are, when, I'm email, when the kids are emailing me with their work, I'm making sure that I'm still trying to make silly jokes and... Yeah ask them about what they've watched and things that have got nothing to do with work because I kind of think it's important that they have some sort of human contact as well because this is horrible at the moment and it will be over at some point. But I think we've got, a, we've, part of our job has got to be a duty to kind of help these young people through it. Absolutely true. 